But today's experience is all about ocelots, which are amazing animals. Here's an awesome image of one. They have incredible adaptations to survive um, where they're found, which is in Brazil and Argentina, even up into, into North America or into the uh, United States. But we have an expert going to talk about that in a little bit, which is really exciting. Let's talk about these amazing cats. They are gorgeous. They're beautiful animals. They're smallish, not real tall. They have these really nice blotchy patterns, a light wrapped in this really kind of cool dark black outline. They also are unique in that they have stripes. So the ocelot is a spotted cat with stripes as well. How cool is that? Pretty unique. On the back of their eye, on the back of their ears are these bright white eye spots. I wonder why those eye spots might be there. Bright white eye spots on the back of the ears. There's some thought that maybe when mom ocelot is running around, the kittens can see those bright white eye spots and can follow her a little bit better in the habitats and ranges that they're found. They have these amazing sensitive whiskers, help them feel around at night, feeling around for objects, things that are in the way. And I want to go back a little bit. Those of you that tuned into Gator, thank you so much for tuning into Gator. Remember that thing in the eye that helped them see better at night? For the Gators reflected that beautiful, strange red color. Well, that's a symbol of an animal that's nocturnal. These guys are nocturnal animals. Nocturnal animals are active when? Nocturnal. I know people are putting nighttime active, aren't they? Nocturnal animals are active at night, diurnal, daytime. These guys are nocturnal, and they have that fancy layer of cells behind the eye called a tapetum, the tapetum, and that acts like a mirror, gathering in whatever light's available and essentially making it brighter for them to see during the nighttime. So that tapetum on the back layer of the eyes. Really neat thing, and something I'm learning as we go along, let's come down here to these wonderful claws and paws. Believe it or not, these guys are preyed on by some animals, like the cougar. Cougars will take these guys. To get away, the ocelot will climb a tree. Cougars can go up, but they can't come down very well. These guys can climb, literally climb down a tree by kind of position, rotating their ankles. Imagine that you're an ocelot. Do this for me. Imagine you're an ocelot, you're kind of on the ground and you're getting ready to climb down the tree. If it's kind of set up, it's kind of hard to do. But if I'm able to, can you do this with me? Rotate your paws, rotate your feet, your hands. It might help you get down the tree a little bit easier, a little bit better. So you're literally able to climb down the tree. And ocelots can do that. Cougars, if they need to come down, they've got to jump. Now they can do very well, but they've got to jump down those trees where the ocelot can climb down and kind of go around to get away from one of their predators. This is one of the cat species found in North America, found in the United States. Can you guys think of some others? What's some other cat species that are found in the United States? We have the ocelot. Lynx. Bobcats. Cougars. Or, same animal, puma or same animal, mountain lion, right? Even the jaguars can sometimes sneak up in the United States. And then one of my favorite cats, and you've got to look them up because we don't have them here and not many zoos do have them, is the jaguarundi. It's a real cat, the jaguarundi, look it up. So those are the cat species, the ocelot being one of them in, in the United States. What else we have here? Let's see what our sign says. See what our wonderful interpretive says. Sensitive whiskers, talk about those guys. Sharp teeth, they are a predator. We're going to look at their diet here in a second, kind of, sort of. Um, the tapetum, how about that? There it is. 
the tail helping them climb a little bit, which is really kind of cool. It's neat to see there's all this cool stuff going on with them. The ocelots. Here, we've been really lucky to have a new space built for them, which is really exciting. When we look into the space, we're waiting for the ocelot to be put onto the habitat for us, as a matter of fact, as we're going through. It's really neat because they've said, okay, what do ocelots need? What do ocelots do in the wild? Well, we just learned they climb. They can climb trees and climb rocks. Um, believe it or not, ocelots are really good swimmers. Who knew? They'll swim and get around in the, in the water. So they're really good swimmers, which is kind of neat to think about. So in the habitat, a little place of waffled water for them to play in. They do need shade. All of us do, right? People come to the North Carolina Zoo, they're like, it's hot. But there's so much shade here at the zoo, I can get out of that heat sometimes and find those shady spots, which is kind of cool. I just got a note that uh, our little, our, our female, she's being a little shy today. Um, so we'll, bring, we'll make sure that you guys get to see her in a second. So it's kind of, I want to let you guys know what's, what's going on behind the scenes, kind of. So Kat is working with our cat. Oh, how about that? Our cat, one of our keepers, is working with the cat, the ocelot, to see if she'll come out and visit with you guys here in a little bit. Let's talk about this diet, these sharp, sharp teeth. They have an amazing teeth. You know what? I, I think I brought a skull. Um, hold on a second. I think a skull's going to come. What might ocelots eat in the water? Oops, see, there it is. Magic. Ta-da! So it's not a very big cat. Not a very big cat. When we had the gator skull, remember how big the gator skull was? So it's not a very big cat. But really efficient predator or hunter. Carnivore. There's our science word again. Carnivore. So that's that amazing skull. And those sharp, sharp teeth are what they're using to catch and kill their prey. And their prey, primarily, small rodents. They might take, oh, like small possums sometimes. They might even take small anteaters. And believe it or not, remember, they're also found down into South America. We're going to talk about range total in a little bit. But they're found down into South America. So they'll even eat small primates, right? And those sharp, sharp teeth are what they're using, these to kill their prey. And then the teeth in the back, I'm gonna ask Matt, can I come a little closer to you, Matt? I love to show these sharp, sharp teeth in the back. They act like scissors. Can you see that a little bit? So when, they're, when they've killed that prey item, they can get really close to the bone and get as much of the meat off as they can using those almost scissor-like carnassals, those fancy science words, those carnassal teeth in the back. They don't have flat molars like you and I do. They have those cutting or shearing teeth in the back to get that food. Eyes in the front, they're a predator. So eyes in the front, having eyes in the front like you and I do, helps us judge distance very well. Any athletes out there, anybody playing baseball or football, um, that is able to give us distance vision. We can see how far away something is where most prey items, most animals that are being hunted, their eyes are on the side of their head. And eyes on the side help me see around better, let me kind of take in the space a little bit better, but eyes in front for this amazing cat or feline predator. Yeah, Wendy. We had a question asking about, is that a real skull? Is that a real skull? Nope, this is one that we purchased um, and we we're able to show out. Um, real bone is heavy and it doesn't last quite as long. We have a few real skulls out and about, um, but this one is plastic. Thanks for the question. I should tell you that there are people kind of behind the scenes that are working in the conservation, education, and science department that are answering your questions as you're going along. So please shout those answers, questions out. And you guys have done some, had some really good questions, and I'm sorry that we still haven't got to all of your answers. It's amazing how many questions you're giving us. So a shout out to the guys in conservation, education, and science that are answering our questions. Thank you very much. I don't know who else is doing today. I think Linda and Kathy maybe. Mm -hmm. um, I think Emily's out there. Um, who am I missing? Who's out? Who else is out there? I don't know. There's a few people out there answering your questions. They're all in. They're kind of my, they're my coworkers. They're my colleagues. They're my buddies. So that is the skull. 
I want to show you a couple hides. Now these hides are real. I'm going to hand this to Wendy, maintaining our social distance as best we can. These hides are real. They're animal from animals that have um, possibly passed away at, the, at, at a zoo in the wild. The one on top is an animal that used to live here. This is um, a neat example of a, of a United States pattern. A little lighter in color. Um, they're not quite as dark. So you see that with this. And then the darker one, giving you an idea of the difference in the pattern between different types of ocelots, where they're found. I think that we might be able to see our ocelot. I'm gonna put this down real quick and step off. I'm gonna round the corner, ready? Let's go, let's take a peek. He's still being a little shy, I think. Is it because we're here? No, it's not because we're here. It's because she's an ocelot. Ocelots are shy, secretive animals. They have that amazing pattern, that really cool, the stripes and the spots. What's that called when you're able to blend in or hide in your environment? What's that called when you're able to do that? A lot of animals have that ability to hide in their environment based on their color or their pattern. Can't hear the typing. Camouflage? Yeah, that's right. So these guys are camouflaged. Now I mentioned that they're also, that they are a predator and sometimes a prey. So being able to hide, being able to blend in is really beneficial for both reasons. As a prey item, they can hide from the cougar, sit real still, and as the, as the light, as the sun is broken up into the shades and shadows, they're able to blend in, almost disappear out there. So even though the pattern that we saw you're like, it's not much of a pattern. I can see that very well. Nope, not if there's a dappled sunlight, not if there's broken sun as it's coming down to the forest floor. They disappear, essentially. And then flip it when they become predator. Let's get as close as we can. Let's act very stealthy. Let's, let's be very quiet and secretive. Can you guys do that real quick? Be really quiet. Like you're going to sneak up on something. Maybe you've got a, um, a candy bar in front of you you're going to sneak up on, or a bowl of cereal or some carrots and broccoli. You're gonna sneak up on it, shh, as quiet as you can, to get as close as you can. Kind of a weird analogy, but you gotta get the idea. You're gonna be quiet in order to do that. So that's kind of cool. What are they sneaking up on again? They're sneaking up on those small rodents a lot of times. So mice, rats, things like that. And they'll take some birds from time to time. And it's kind of neat. When they take a bird, when they've killed a bird to eat it, they don't eat the whole thing. You'll see them using that kind of, that sticky kind of tongue. Not really sticky, I guess. What's, what's another word for sticky? It's kind of bumpy. And they'll use that tongue and they'll tear off the feathers. They don't want to eat the feathers. So they'll tear the feathers off before eating the prey item. So there's, and something that's kind of neat to think about, their, their habitat can be forest. It can be um, an arid, like a desert space. It can be a plains. Um, it could be right at the edge of two different habitats that are coming together. Um, but on, during the wet season in the rainforest or maybe in the wetlands or the, near the swamps or the rivers, these guys will also take fish and crabs, animals like that, which is kind of neat to think about. They're not just eating the animals that are on the land sometimes. They'll take advantage of the animals wherever they are. So their habitat is extremely varied as is their diet. And their diet corresponds to where they live a lot of times. Yeah, what you got? We have a really great great question since we're talking about diet. diet. Since they live here under human care, yep. they would normally hunt in the wild. How do we uh, mimic that sort of behavior here under human care? Oh, fantastic question. I'm gonna come over here. and we have a wonderful camera guy, Matt, here with us. Matt, are you able to zoom in on the, on the law, on that fake log or the ball that's back there? He's got a thumbs up. So that's what we'll do. Um, cat, our keeper cat, has put food in those logs and in the ball. And so when our, when our cat comes out, when Inca comes out, she's going to have to find the food. So instead of just putting it on a plate and giving them to her, they've got to work for it. And that's called enrichment. And you're going to hear me talk about it, you're going to hear Leslie talk about it. Anybody, when you come to the zoo, you're going to hear that term a lot. 
enrichment. And enrichment are things that we can provide the animals, challenges we can provide the animals that kind of encourages natural behavior. So these guys can jump, they're hunting, they're using an amazing sense of smell, excellent eyesight, good hearing, but now they're looking using that sense of smell to find and locate their prey items. So when Inca does come out, she's gonna to have to use her sense of smell to find the food. And in the log, for example, there's some food. And in that ball, and it's just hung up with some, new, with some paper towels. So Inca's gonna to have to get up and pull that down to get the food that's in there. What are they eating? Well, I just asked Kat that question, as a matter of fact, to find out. So today, they're getting some fish, or she's getting some fish. She's getting some uh, mice, and she's getting some uh, kind of specialized cat food that's made for some of the animals here at the North Carolina Zoo, and other zoos too, for that matter. So it's kind of neat, and I, and I can tell you right now, in the stream, can you guys see the stream down there? In the stream is a couple fish, now they're not alive. There's a couple fish in there, and I know that cat has hid some other food in there as well, which is kind of cool. Well, as we're waiting for Inca, let's tell you a little bit about Inca. And I don't know why I'm doing all the talking. I've got an amazing ocelot expert with me today. Um, and you guys have met her. A lot of you have met her from behind the camera. She's been here almost all the time. This is Wendy. Wendy, come on in. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Wendy Foley. I'm usually behind the camera, either organizing Steve and keeping him on track, keeping keeping track of time, or actually filming. Um, so it's nice to have someone else filming today, so so I can <laughs> gab. I actually was a zookeeper before I was an educator, and I worked here um, with the ocelots here at the desert habitat for almost a decade. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually got to work uh, with the ocelots that should be out eventually um, <laughs> doing what in. cats normally do being shy and elusive uh, so they're doing exactly what they would do in the wild hiding from humans uh, but I actually get to work with them I, I did work with them so uh, Inca is now 15 years old uh, her her uh, I guess called we could call him a roommate Roommates sometimes that works because, yes, for now. boyfriend. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> um, the, uh, Diego also lives here. We definitely will not see him. He is very shy. Uh, he is 16 years old. Uh, together, they have lived together almost their entire lives. Because you get, because you mentioned age, um, that yeah. seems like a long time. But these guys, that seems like pretty. They've done pretty well under the under the care of the North Carolina Zoo. Oh yes, um, in the wild. Uh, maybe eight, nine oh, years wow. old in the wild. That's Almost a pretty twice. long lifespan when you're when you're living um, out in nature uh, at under human care. We yeah. have veterinarians. We have planned out diets. We have enrichment. We have air conditioning. Uh, we have all kinds of um, wonderful things to to keep to keep their lives a little easier. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Yeah. So that's Inca. She still hasn't come out. No, nope. and this is one of her behavior traits, or her yeah. kind of personality traits. So, so people always ask, uh, and it's a really, uh, I saw a few people in the questions before I came out, a lot of people are asking if you could have these guys as pets. Oh. Um, and we get that a lot, and the keepers probably answer this question thousands of times every year, uh, because they are a beautiful cat, they are a cat that's about the size that you would think you would be able to have in your home. Uh, but I can guarantee you, you would not want one as a pet. <laughs> one, it's illegal because they are endangered. Uh, we haven't talked about that yet, but we will. Um, and coming from a keeper's perspective, um, their urine is horrendously potent. <laughs> Think about that. So horrendously potent that it eats concrete and metal over time. How so about that? Think about that in your in your home and in your in your litter box. Whew, good thought. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> We were going to dive into range, kind of yeah. where, wh what, where do they live in the United States and into South America? Can you tell a little bit about that? Because I know that's something you were in. Yeah, will with. you grab that poster? So the ocelots that we have here, Inca and Diego, they represent the North American ocelot, or it's also referred to as the Texas ocelot. It's found in Texas, and that is it. They used Shocking. to be up into um, Louisiana and Arkansas, but they're literally found only in this tiny little tip of south, that would be eastern Texas. That's eastern, we'll, Tex we'll help you with that one. Yeah, southeastern <laughs> Texas, literally this tiny, tiny tip. And there's less than 50 in the wild. Think about that, guys, 50. 50. Less than what's in most classrooms. 
now, in that's a day. A type of ocelot. That's kind of a subspecies, Just the right? Just Texas ocelot. They're found ocelot, in more yeah. places. And they're found in these two little regions. And this map has a little bit bigger. Um, I got it for you. Sign on here. At least it was. So they're found way down in this little tip, yeah. and they're they're in this. Laguna Atascosa, which say that 10 times fast. No. Laguna Atascosa <laughs> National Wildlife Refuge. And they're doing a wonderful service for the ocelots. Keeping that, that thorny scrub brush there and not tearing it down. Uh, that's where the ocelots in Texas like to live. And then this tiny little yellow dot I'm right gonna, there. I'm gonna interrupt you. Is she, she came coming? out of the door. She's peeking. She's peeking out. We're the gonna door. jinx ourselves. Yeah, we are. So there, there's Here she comes. the two populations are separated. So those of you who are saying there's not an ocelot in there. I see her little How white spot there, behind <laughs> her ear poking out. I'm going to step back here so maybe we can get her. Um, so those two populations are separated and that's what's causing some of the problems right. is they can't get to each other. There's golf courses in the way, oh, there's, yeah. there's mini marts um, and all kinds of uh, housing developments in between the two. So the two populations can't meet in the middle. There's no mingling, no happy hour mingling, yeah. no meeting. They're, they're, they're practicing social distancing. There's all the time, all the time. yes. <laughs> um, so that's, that's a, a big is. issue. And you guys see her? Oh, she's beautiful. Isn't she beautiful? Oh. So um, Inca, I can tell you from personal experience, is an amazing ocelot for many reasons. One, first of all, she's really pretty, um, but she's an amazing <laughs> mother. Now, as a zookeeper, as an educator, a lot of us have been through a lot of schooling. How many years of school did you go to? I went to six. After, after high school, so a yeah. lot of schooling. Um, she taught me more watching her be a mother in in those first few uh years than i ever learned in school that's so neat she is an amazing mom and kat and kim and her keepers here um can attest to what an amazing mom she is uh my her when her and diego first came they had their first litter of kittens here yep. while i was a keeper and i probably watched them every lunch break every break I could possibly have, any minute I had, I watched her be a mom. Really? She teaches them how to balance themselves, how to hunt, how to stock things. Uh, she disciplines them. What she's doing now. Just like our parents Does discipline she really? us. Oh, she would give them a little swat. No kidding. When they were misbehaving. Uh, she was an amazing mom, amazing mom. That's cool. Now, I think I, I saw in the questions before, a lot of people were asking if, uh, her, if she and her, her partner lived together Together, right. and they do not No. so in the wild they are solitary except during the breeding season mm -hmm. uh, so we mimic that here at the zoo uh, we mimic that breeding season so they are together uh, only for the breeding season and then they are separated and mom uh, carries the baby for human moms would love this guess how long how long do you think a cat an ocelot is, is actually is pregnant Look how beautiful An she is. An ocelot is probably pregnant for, I don't know, what, maybe five months? Five months. So humans are pregnant for nine. Right. Ocelots are pregnant for in between two and three months. Those of you, I'm going to interrupt you real quick. Two to three months? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys, when you're watching, because Matt's doing a great job of following her, watch what she's doing. She's using her sense of smell. She's checking out her habitat. Is she concerned that Wendy and I are out here? Absolutely not. She's one of our animals that's out about a lot, but they are shy and secretive animals. Um, but what is she doing? She's stopping, she's smelling, she's sniffing, she's looking, she's doing what a cat would do in their natural spaces. And it's really neat to see that. Um, and it's, yeah, sometimes it's a challenge and we appreciate that. Um, but we're here for the animals as well as we're here for you guys too. So it's fun to kind of see her doing her cat thing out and about. I'll get out of your way. And she is Inca and actually Diego too. Diego's much uh, more shy than she is, uh, but she definitely is a uh, more what you would assume a cat out in nature would act like she, when she is not happy with you, she will hiss at you. Yeah, she'll tell you. Huh? She definitely tells you how she is feeling. Some of those vocalizations. Uh, so but, what are, I'm sorry. Oh, but I, I was just saying, uh, she, they only are pregnant for two to three months. That's crazy. Yeah. And so the baby will stay with mom for um, up to, uh, a longer of up to two years. Wow. So a lot less than humans. Okay. Um, but uh, <laughs> after after two years, they can go off and find their own territories gotcha. um, and start their own families. Cool. Um, you meant you hinted at it a little bit. 
about some of the challenges ocelots are facing in the wild. Um, could you go into a couple of those? Again, you talked about the distance in the in the Texas ocelots, yeah. how they're not, they have some barriers that are in the way and those barriers are really an issue. What other kind of challenges are these guys facing in the wild? So our North American ocelots have a lot of challenges. First of all, there's, there's less than 50 out in nature. Uh, but the ocelots range all the way down into Mexico, Central and South America, um, and most of the, I would say, the, the resources and the plans within zoos, the species survival plan, that SSP program that we do, um, we, we're focusing on the ocelots in Brazil. Their populations mm -hmm. are high enough um, that we can put those resources towards that and we can build up those populations to help sustain them for long periods of time. Nice. But we are not forgetting the ocelots here in North America. Sure. Uh, we are working very hard, obviously, within zoos that we're working on the populations to keep them sustained under human care, but we're also doing it in the wild as well. Gotcha. Very cool. Well, hoping that, again, when they say working with, working with animals and working with kids sometimes, right? So, although she's doing her ocelot thing, we are hoping she would come out and yeah. kind of interact with some of the enrichment a little bit. She's going through her logs a lot. She's sniffing within a couple of the logs that are here. We, um, and then we, she's going to chill. We did, uh, we have been trying to do at least one shout out on every live. Uh, we do have one for an employee's daughter, uh, yeah. Noelle. So Noelle. Hey, Noelle. Hi, Noelle. Um, I actually have a personal shout out. Oh, I'm, here we go. I am actually supposed to be in Texas meeting my nephew for the first yes, time, but is. under the what is happening in, with the world, um, I am here with you. So I wanted to give a shout out to my family in Texas. Um, I am excited to meet my new nephew whenever I can. So <laughs> hi, Bennett. I love you. And Logan, I can't wait to meet you. And Emily and Adam, hi. So, oh, that was so we're sweet. excited. But that's, that's a little awesome. tear. I know. I think it's a little tear I coming know. from there. All right, guys, we're going to um, begin to wrap this up. It looks like uh, Inca is going to do her ocelot thing and hang out there in the in the tree. One thing, you, once we reopen, there is something that you guys can do to help ocelots, believe it or not, because it's it's through the conservation programs here at the North Carolina Zoo. Check out this button. It goes very well against my really cool blue. You can purchase these buttons and all the dollar that you make from this, this costs all of a dollar, all 100 pennies goes to the conservation efforts here at the North Carolina Zoo. So this is something you can think about. There's an ocelot one and there's several other species, several other types of animals that are represented on these buttons. Um, so that's, the last, that's one of the last things I do. I think I just had a bee fly into my hair. I got a bee in my bonnet. There's a bee in my bonnet. Wendy has something really cool to share, and then we're going to cut away. Hold this. I will. So for each live, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we are going to have an activity for you to be able to do at home. So this is something that you might be able to find laying around in your house, and if you have a cat at home or an animal that you can provide enrichment for. We learned about enrichment today. We did. Uh, these are something you can make at home for your cat. So simple sticks, some twine, um, some feathers. We actually did test this out on some uh, co-workers' cats. It Good is cat-approved. Um, <laughs> and then these are some other things you can make and simple simple stuff toilet paper roll cut into a little ball very simple yeah if you have pipe cleaners around how cool is that make little toys you've seen cat clean cats to play with the things the, the rings around milk jugs and things like that and and the best one we made steve some enrichment so you can put your cat kibble inside of a toilet paper roll but we put something in there for steve that's not cat kibble so it's enriching for you <laughs> So I had, to, I had to break into it. It's a paper towel tube. Um, I hear there's something in it. I'm using my other senses to find out what's going on. Now I'm going to manipulate. I'm going to look inside. Ho, ho, ho. And I am not going to share this treat with anybody but myself. <laughs> <laughs> I love Cat Steve enrichment. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so very much. We'd like to thank Inca um, for coming out and at least showing herself a little bit of her beautiness while she's out and about. Wendy, thank you um, for hanging out with us today. Of course. Um, remember, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 10 o'clock, we'll be doing shows like this, um, responding to your questions as we get a chance, telling you a little bit more about some of the animals at the North Carolina Zoo, and maybe taking you to places that you don't always get a chance to see. Well, I thank Matt for coming down with um, DNCR and sharing us out, and other people, our guys, who are answering the questions. Continuing to ask those questions, we'll get online, we'll answer as many of them as we can. Uh, and in the meantime, stay safe, keep that distance, and we'll see you again at North Carolina Zoo in the near, near future. Stay safe, everybody. Bye, guys.